Now let me point out about this particular article. This was not something that just happened yesterday. This was something I did in the first term. It was a, if it was an impeachable offense, then you should have impeached me before I got reelected. I did this, and then the people of Illinois knew I did it, and then they hired me again. How can you impeach me on a charge like this that happened in the first term? You didn't impeach me then, and then the people chose me again because they evidently approved of what I did because they understand that they'd like to have a leader who's going to go out and try to get results for them. Third point, the other article, prescription drugs from Canada. I can't wait to talk about this one. What did I do here? What did I do? How many of us on this side of the aisle, and I got to think some of you on that side of the aisle, went all over the campaign trail and talked to senior citizens and bingos and senior homes and in kitchens and homes around the state and understood how difficult it was for them to be able to afford their medicines and pay for their groceries and afford their electric bills. How many of us talked about those things in speeches? How many of us who were familiar with how the Congress operates actually had talking points that were given by the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and they had that line, food or medicine, food or medicine? How many of us said all that? And how many of us kept railing against the FDA because they wouldn't allow Canada, wouldn't allow American seniors to go to Canada and get same prescription drugs, the same medicines made by the exact same companies, only if you go to Canada, you can get it for 40 or 50 percent less and save money for senior citizens. And how many of us believe in free trade? Democrats believe in it, and I know you guys on the Republican side of the aisle believe in it, and yet somehow on the issue of prescription drugs, we don't have free trade. We can't go to Canada, our number one trading partner, and get the medicines that are necessary to save the lives of our seniors and our families and our children. So we found a way to go to Canada. And I was the first state, I was the first governor to do it. And the idea came to me, not from me, but from then Congressman Rahm Emanuel. Senator Cullerton's congressman, my congressman, came to me with a good idea and said, why don't you lead the charge and lead the fight on this and be the first state to go to Canada and test whether or not the FDA will allow you to do it or not. Think about the morality of this, think about how we can help our seniors, and think about what we can do to help families. And I love the idea, and we did it. And then so did Wisconsin, and so did Kansas, and so did Vermont. If you're impeaching me on providing safe and affordable prescription drugs by going to Canada and getting the same medicines made by the exact same companies, then the governor of Wisconsin ought to be impeached, the governor of Kansas ought to be impeached, the governor of Vermont ought to be impeached, and while we're at it, let's go reach right into the United States Senate and let's expel John McCain and Ted Kennedy, because I worked with them on this issue of the reimportation of prescription drugs. And then, let's not stop there. Let's demand that President Obama fire Rahm Emanuel, because Rahm Emanuel is the one who gave me this idea. If you're going to throw me out of office for something like this, and how can those guys stay in the offices that they have? Here again is an issue that happened in the first term, not the second term, and everybody knew about it, and in spite of the criticism, and I understand all that, the people of Illinois elected me a second time knowing what I did with regard to prescription drugs for our senior citizens. The next paragraph, next article, is the issue of the Auditor General. Now what did I do there? The Auditor General, apparently it's my understanding, had an issue with CMS, Central Management Services. Now, <clears throat> I may be the only one here left who still is proud of all the different things I've been able to accomplish as governor, and I want to say most of it couldn't have happened without you here in the State Senate. You all know what the political dynamic has been here over the past six years, and every one of the big achievements I've been able to get as governor couldn't have been done without you, and uh, sometimes with you. But I want you to know that one of the best things we did was invest record amounts of money in education, $8.4 billion in new money in education, a 30% increase, and we didn't do it on the backs of the middle class by raising their taxes. We expanded health care to 750,000 families who didn't have it before, increasing payments within the budget, but we didn't do it without, by raising taxes on the middle class. But we did it in different ways. And one of the ways we did it was by efficiency, consolidating functions, having agencies do a better job making sure they can streamline their activities, and central management services, CMS, was one of those places. 
In the first term, they were successful in saving over $500 million for taxpayers because they found creative ways to do it. And in this particular case, on this issue with the Auditor General, they found a way to save some money in some place. And then what they wanted to do was allow us to be able to use that money in the general revenue fund to invest in health care and education and other general revenue items. But then the Auditor, Auditor General got involved and said, stop, don't do it. Now, I have a recollection of actually remembering this because I remember I was in Washington, D.C. when the head of CMS and that Mr. Holland, the Auditor General, got into a little bit of a verbal uh, fight. I remember being amused by that, thinking you had a couple of accountants kind of scrapping over the issue of whether or not some money should be spent a certain way or not. When the uh, Inspector General, Mr. Holland, told us you can't do it, guess what we did? We didn't do it. How can you impeach me and throw me out of office? The chief accountant of the state comes in and says, you can't do that. We hear you. We're not doing it. And we didn't do it. How can that be an impeachable offense? And here, too, like on prescription drugs for seniors and flu vaccines for uh, the elderly and for infants, here, too, this was an issue that took place in the first term, not the second term. This was something, if it was so bad, you should have impeached me on before and not now, and in spite of it, the people of Illinois elected me a second time. Now, the last article is the report from the IG, the Inspector General. And just to back up and give you a little bit of history, one of the accomplishments that we were able to have together in the first term in the veto session of 2003 was to create a new ethics law, change the rules in ethics, and for the first time ever, create an Inspector General that was independent of the governor, not the governor's friend, but an independent inspector general who would be brought on to police the system of state government, that he or she would be there to make sure that all of us, all state employees and others who work for the governor, in this case, are doing things right. We hired a former United States attorney as our first inspector general. This report from the inspector general alleges that some people uh, perhaps may have, it's an allegation, nothing proven, nothing shown yet to be true, but an allegation that some people who work for me may have violated some of the hiring rules. In that very report by the Inspector General, there's never an allegation that I ever knew anything about it. How can I possibly be thrown out of office on something that the Inspector General doesn't even claim I knew anything about? And incidentally, something that still has not been resolved. So I ask you to remember, too, that that issue was one that took place in the first term, not the second term. And if it was so bad then, then perhaps I should have been impeached over that. But yet again, the Inspector General doesn't say that I knew anything about it. There hasn't been any finding that anybody did anything wrong. And I've got to tell you, the fact that we have an Inspector General was something that I pushed very hard for. And yeah, it gets embarrassing sometimes when your own Inspector General finds that some people who work for you may not have done something right. But the greater good is served because you're policing the system and making sure that people don't do things they shouldn't do and have a better understanding on some of the things they shouldn't be in a position to be able to do. So I believe in all of the evidence that we've been presented to you. In fact, I know. There hasn't been a single piece of information that proves any wrongdoing. You haven't proved a crime, and you can't because it hadn't happened. You haven't given me a chance to disprove a crime, but so far a crime has not been proven here in this impeachment proceeding. How can you throw a gov governor out of office with insufficient and incomplete evidence? You haven't been able to show that there was anything wrong, in my judgment, on any of these allegations with regard to things I did in my first term for senior citizens and for children, how we complied with the Auditor General when he told us to follow his, his rules, how we had an Inspector General who, who found some things but didn't say I was involved in it. How can those things be shown to be anything but what they are, but not wrongdoing? It's not evidence of any wrongdoing. In fact, there is no evidence before your body here that shows, no evidence, zero, that there was any wrongdoing by me as governor. And again, if you give me a chance to be able to bring witnesses in, I can show you not only that I didn't do anything wrong, I can show you that I did a lot of things that were mostly right and that some of the things that are being said about me simply aren't true. And when I get my day in court, I'll have a chance to be able to prove it.